you have a craving for pasta and zucchini noodles are just not cutting it, stay tuned. I've got the recipe for you. Got a question for you. What is one of the things that you miss on keto? For me, it's a couple of things. It was my grandmother's hard dumplings and pasta. Well, I've already fixed the dumpling situation, which will be a video later on. But I've just recently fixed the pasta situation. And everybody always tells you, oh, go for the zucchini noodles or the spaghetti squash or whatever substitutions they have. And while those are good as dishes on their own, when you're really craving the pasta, those don't work. I mean, it doesn't satisfy that need. Well, I recently found a recipe that mimicked pasta. Now, let me backtrack. You can go online and there's a lot of different things that you can do for pasta. And one of the closest ones that I found was actually a baked egg noodle. You had to put it in the oven and put it out on a sheet, you know, and, and but it didn't really perform like pasta. And that's what I wanted. I wanted something that I could put in dishes and make macaroni and cheese or chicken spaghetti or lasagna and uh, couldn't find anything well I found a recipe online on reddit and a lady gave ingredients on how to do it and she said that it acted like pasta it dried like pasta it cooked like pasta and I thought hmm okay <laughs> but my brain started thinking and I was she was using lupine flour and some other stuff to do it. Now, my mind started thinking, what if I used carbulose flour? Now, this is something that's new to me. I've just started using it. And I'll tell you right off, I am in love with it. The, I'm just, I'm, I'm using it for a few things. Not everything, but a few things. Because it mimics flour. Now, I'm a proponent. You... Do your own research, okay? Because it is not for everybody. Be your own judge. Now, if you're doing this for strict keto, yeah, this is probably not the flour for you because it is a wheat derivative and it does have a uh, vital wheat gluten in it. So, like, and if you're wheat intolerant, gluten intolerant, I'm sorry, this is not this is not going to work for you. But if you're just doing keto, low carb, for and lowering your carbs, and you're not worried about the wheat or you're not worried about the gluten, then you're gonna love this, okay? So I tried that recipe, and I actually tried five different recipes, and the one that come number one, it dries like pasta, so you can make a batch and you can actually dry it and store it in your pantry for months on end. Yeah, like real store-bought pasta. It cooks like pasta. You put it in boiling water and you, if you're doing it fresh, you uh, cook it for about a minute or two. If you're drying it, you need it about 10 to 12 minutes to boil it. It holds up to sauces. Um, it's got a really good taste. My recipe you would be hard to hard pressed to um, distinguish this from real pasta. And you're going to be so amazed at how easy this is. Okay, so let's dig in. Okay, first ingredient you're going to need is carbulose flour. And when I bought it, and I will uh, put a link down below for it. It comes in a three pound bag. I don't know if you can see this. And the net carbs on this is, I've lost it. 
it was really low. Um, but anyway, if you're unfamiliar, if you're unfamiliar with what Carbulose flour is, it is actually uh, the main ingredient in Carb Quick. The difference between this and Carb Quick is the difference between flour and Bisquick. Carb Quick has the extra stuff to make it more uh, suitable for biscuits and stuff. You don't have to add the leavening or the buttermilk and all that. Um, because it has it in there. About. Okay, so what you need is for one batch, one batch, this makes four um, servings, okay? You can make it to where it's uh, three servings, whatever you, you size it up. But I've got this uh, figured out as four servings. And for two, a little over three carbs, three gr um, net carbs. Per serving for for four serving batch. Okay, what you need is 80 grams of carbulose flour. I'm a little over. Yeah, that work. And you need one large egg. Put this in here. Don't lose out all your good flour. And try to get these eggs at room temperature. Mine are not quite there. You can add a pinch of salt if you want. Um, I don't, or I didn't last time. It probably won't be this time. And you just start stirring it in. Now, if you find that your egg is not enough for the batter, for the uh, dough. No problem. You want to add a little water to it. Not much, just a little. A little at a time until you get the consistency that you need. Okay, this is what you're looking for. Okay. Can you see it? It's not sticky. But it's not dry. You can mold it. Okay. Now, after you've worked with it a little bit, it doesn't take much. Get it to where you want it. Here comes the hard part. You need to let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay? And then we'll come back. So I've got a question for you. How many of you guys have been on keto for a while and you find that there's something that you really miss? And 
no matter what the substitutions they tell you to try. It just doesn't satisfy the craving. What is the dish for you that you miss the most? Comment down below. I'm curious. I want to know. Like I said, for me, it was my grandmother's hard dumplings and pasta. Don't want it all the time. It's not something that I want every day. But there are times that you just have a craving for it. And it's not all you keto. It's just like, no, nope, sorry. And I'm telling you, zoodles, zoodles zucchini noodles. Now, don't get me wrong, I love me some good spaghetti squash, but no, it just doesn't have that satisfaction. So, But really, comment down below, let me know what it is that you miss the most, okay? And I will be right back. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. Now, actually this dough is a soft dough. Uh, it's a lot softer than the other recipes that I started, so if for some reason you can't wait the 30 minutes, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. But just in case, let it rest. So now what we're going to do is take some more of that carbulose flour and you want to dust your board. Because while it's not sticky, it is still wet. Okay, and you want to start working this. Now, I probably didn't have to dust that much. Put this to the side. Now, you want your rolling pin for this. And go ahead and dust it too. Whoops. You don't have to roll it out much because we're actually going to roll it in here. But what I do like to do, let's see. Okay. What I Let's try this again. Okay. <laughs> so what I like to do is, since this is four servings, is to go ahead, see it's real tender, and portion it out into four pieces. And you can be more precise with this if you need to. And I know you're thinking, ah, that is not much pasta. But, we're gonna roll it out in here and you'll actually see that you get a lot more than what it looks like. Okay, so we're back now. Had to get my Just barely. Okay. You want to make sure that you've got enough flour on your pasta because you don't want it sticking. in the machine. And then we're just going to start rolling it. Whoop, hang on. Make sure that you got it on the largest setting. For me that happens to be one. Your pasta machine may be different. Okay. And then go down a setting. 
and roll it again. And if you're smart, you will actually anchor your pasta machine to your board. Go down a setting. Let's see. Now you don't absolutely have to have a pasta machine to do this. You can definitely roll this out by hand. Go down a setting. See, the more you roll it out, the thinner it gets, and the more pasta you actually end up with. And I think that would be as far as I would go on this. Now from here, you cut it into shapes. Now my pasta machine is a cheap one. Um, I've tried using these other shapes and yeah, I end up still having to pull it apart. But for noodles, look, just cut. And you can actually look up videos and you can make different shapes from this pasta. You can dry it. Now, if you want to use it fresh, just simply take this, put it in a pot of boiling water for about a minute or two. And then you've got your pasta. You can then you can add pasta sauce to it if you want. Um, if you want to dry it, just you they've got drying racks you can use, or you can just put this on like a uh, what I do. It's um like a you know when you take your cookies out out of the oven and you cooling rack. That's what I'm trying to come up with. Put them on the cooling rack overnight, and you've got pasta. Anyway, that's enough for a little sauce on it. And there you go. You've got pasta. So, let me get up some boiling water, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. But look. See if you can see that. It looks like fresh pasta. It tastes like fresh pasta. It dries like fresh pasta. It stores like real pasta. That's real pasta. Ladies and gentlemen, now, whatever recipe that calls for pasta that you want, you can make it. So, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's cooked. So to cook your pasta, you just put it in boiling water for about a minute or two. And you check it like you would regular pasta. And when it's done, 
just take it out. Add your favorite sauce. You can put it in a dish, put sauce over it, whatever you would do, regular pasta. You can do it with this. And there you go. Real noodles. Holds up to real sauce. Shelf stable. Anytime you want pasta, come back next week and I'll show you a recipe that uses this pasta that you're absolutely going to love. So make sure that you subscribe, uh, hit the like, share if you know somebody who would absolutely love this. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Do you have a craving for... Don't look at me that way. Don't look at me like I'm crazy and just talking to myself. <laughs> okay. Hello. 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 Okay.